that they would ask me about it. Well, here to help us figure out what is best, we've got psychology professor Lee Waters. It's nice to see you. Um, but you have children, but when they were younger, what would you have said to them about what's happening now? Yeah, I mean, age makes a difference in how we talk to our kids. My, t my kids are teenagers now, so what we're trying to do, no matter what the age, is sort of balance that, the need to protect our kids from the news, but then also equip them to be able to handle their emotions when they're dealing with it. So age makes a difference with young kids. I think it really is about keeping it very simple. Um, and talking to them about the facts and the feelings of what's going on, yeah. Should we start a conversation or should we wait until they come to us? Love that question. And the, the answer is tune in to your kids. So your kids will signal to you if they want to talk about it or if they don't. Even if they don't, I think it's still worth saying, are you hearing anything? What are people talking about at school? How do you feel about this? Can yeah. you miss the signal, though? You can miss the signal because kids respond differently when they're, when they're having that what's called secondary stress response. So when they're, you know, we're, we're compassionate beings, you know, by nature. So when we see someone else suffering, some kids will be hypervigilant, get very stressed, very restless, and other kids will kind of tune or turn inwards. Yeah. So it's the ones that kind of turn inwards where you might miss that. But again, that's about knowing your child and knowing, oh, they're a little bit more quiet. And so, hey, buddy, you know, you're a little bit more quiet than did anyone talk about anything at school that yeah, maybe upset yeah. you and and being out as a parent to be able to like kind of relate and validate like I'm upset by this too this is upsetting do you want to talk about it and if they don't want to talk about it do you want to go for a walk do you want to hug your dog do you want to do a drawing um, put the put the word on a post-it note because the emotions that we feel any of us at any age actually watching this they're, they're huge big emotions mm -hmm. and sometimes as parents we make the mistake of thinking I won't talk about it because if I talk about it, it's making it bigger, it's making it real, it's causing more pain. Um, but actually, from a psychology perspective, the best thing to do is to try and talk about it because we have these huge, big emotions swirling inside of us. And the minute we put a word to it, those huge, big emotions become containable. Yeah. Um, with younger kids, a great technique is to get them to write the emotion on a post-it note because then all of a sudden they can see, oh, well, it fits on a post-it note, you know, so... Yeah. Yeah. so I can process this, I can manage this, there's things I can do around it. Yeah. Lee, we, we can't control everything that our kids see, no. but should we be trying to shield them from this? Look, I think it, it does depend a little on the age and the personality of your child, but I would say no to the full shielding. Um, again, like there's that kind of balance between protecting our kids and then equipping them to handle life's realities. So if you take something like a social media, that's a big question at the moment. We just, we just saw um, someone saying, I'm not letting my child watch TikTok. I think at the younger age, sort of under 10, it's a good idea to curate the news and the social media and their experience as much as you can. A little bit of restriction, but then also co-viewing, so sitting with them yeah. or asking them, what did you hear? You know, obviously over the age of 10, <laughs> the horse has already left, you know, yeah. like we can't restrict what, what our uh, tweens and teens are hearing. But what we can do is move from that sort of restriction mode to instruction mode, which is tell me what you're hearing and, and educating our kids about why is consumerism around media and right. social media. So, yeah. you know, do you know this is a reliable source, for example, mm. and this is an opportunity to learn that? Or it is a reliable source, but how is it making you feel? So mm. starting for them to, to self-monitor around this, is, this has become too much now. I do need to turn TikTok off. So yeah. it, when they do see things and they come to you, how, yeah. how do you gauge how much context is too much context? Oh, I love that them? question. Um, context you. is key. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you. Context is key, but again, it's that balance. It's such a... Parenting is a balancing act and we don't get it right all the time. I just want to say that from the start. It's a balance between informing but not overwhelming. Yeah. So this is where age matters. With little kids, the reason why context is important is because... The, the typical response then will be fear. So the context is... It reduces the... Yeah, yeah, because they're like, well, this just seemed to happen out of the blue. This could happen to anyone. This could happen to me. This could happen to my mm -hmm. family. So then the context is around, OK, geography. So here's a map. Here's where we are. This is where this is happening. But also time. You know, this is, there's a long... As we've just heard, you know, there's a long... There's been, this has been happening for a long time, so it's not going to come out of the blue. Mm -hmm. With our teens, the, the reason why context is important is because their response is more around compassion. Right. And so as you were just saying, we've been following this for a long time and there's two sides. Yep. So just, just having that context so they have the compassion for both sides actually yeah. and not one demonise one and yeah.
We so need you to hang around and run a whole seminar later. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so much to, to ask you. Unfortunately, yeah. we, we are out of time. But thank you so much for that. My pleasure. Yeah. Thanks for having me.